All right, so we're going to work on factoring quadratics, several different forms that it'll take. But first I want to talk about why we're doing this, connecting it to what we've done. We've graphed things like x squared plus 7x plus 12. And what we do to find the y-intercept, that's when x equals 0, in order to help us graph, we let x equal 0, so that means y equals 0 squared plus 7 times 0 plus 12. So that cancels out, that cancels out, and you just get y equals 12. So the y-intercept is 0, 12, and you could plot that on your, on your y-axis up here, right? Going up 12. Now, you can also find x-intercepts where it crosses, maybe in two spots. Maybe it's over here. It's actually going to be over here two spots over here, and you can find your vertex or your axis of symmetry, your ax of sim, by doing x equals negative b over 2a, and we talked about that as well. But what I want to talk about is when you have a, when you want to find the y-intercept, set equal to zero. Your y equal to zero when you want to find the x-intercept. So how do you solve x squared plus 7x plus 12? Well, that's what we're going to talk about for quite a while, actually. One way to do it is by factoring. You can factor like this, so that then that one factor is equal to zero or the other one's equal to zero. That's what we're going to do today. What multiplies to 12 and adds to 7? But if it's not factorable, we're going to talk about completing the square. And so that's what we're going to do next. And then after that, a general form of completing the square, because you always do it over and over again, is the quadratic formula. And most of you have probably heard of that as well. So, another w three different ways that we're going to talk about solving this one thing. So, x squared plus 7x plus 12. What two things multiply to 12 and add to 7? Well, so x and x have to go here, because x times x is x squared, and 3 and 4 multiply to 12. Now, 6 and 2 also multiply by, to 12, but what's special about 3 and 4 is that they add to 7x. And just realize that factoring, you can always double-check your answer. This is x squared. This is 4x plus 3x, and 4x plus 3x is 7x. And this is 12. So now it's equal to 0. You set both of these parts equal to 0. Because if two numbers multiplied together equal 0, one of these two has to be 0. Either 0 times something is 0, or something times 0 is 0. It's the only way you can get 0 after multiplying. So this, very important, that it's 0, must be zero. Some of you will try doing this with other numbers, but it doesn't work. So then x equals negative three and x equals negative four. Those are our x-intercepts. You'd graph this and you could plot one, two, three, and four, and you know it's a parabola that opens up that has those two as x-intercepts. Now that's if this was a y. It's just a zero, so these are our answers. Something else. What multiplies to 40 and adds to 14? So 10 and 4. If you don't find it right off the bat, you could list 8 and 5. The 8 and 5 add to 13. Um, and so 4 and 10. Now they have to add to a negative 14, so this has to be a negative four and a negative ten. So m minus four has to equal zero. M minus ten equals zero. So m equals four and m equals ten. Last one. Multiply to negative twenty-four and add to negative five. So now it has to multiply to a negative. So this one's going to be negative and a positive to, in order to multiply by a negative. This one was a negative and a negative. 
So we have a z and a z. What multiplies to 24? Well, we have 6 and 4, 3 and 8, 2 and 12, things like that. But what one positive, one negative, in order to add to a negative 5, we have to choose 3 and negative 8. So if we have plus 3 and minus 8, so z plus 3 equals 0, so z equals th negative 3. Now some of you are saying, why does he always write this step out? I'm going to stop doing it, but I want you to always keep it in mind because it's going to trip you up when this first number isn't that. But I'm fine with you skipping this step in the middle. All right, so this is what I mean. Trinomials where the a is not equal to 1. So now we're going to have a number out in front here. Number out in front. Ugly, right? So before we didn't have a number out in front. So some of you are pretty good where you can still, and I'll discuss that afterwards. So what I'm going to teach you is called the AC method. A, C method. And I call it the AC method because I start off by multiplying A times C. The number in front of the x squared and this constant. So 15 times 2 equals 30. What multiplies to 30 and adds to negative 13? Well, that's 10 and 3, and a negative 10 and a negative 3. So we have 15x squared. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to split up this middle term, minus 10x minus 3x plus 2. And so what I do, this is still equal to our negative 13x. We haven't changed any values. And now I've made four terms, and I'm going to factor by grouping. Notice how I sucked the negative in with this one. Very purposeful here, because if you leave the negative inside, it actually changes what's in here, because the negative would make the 3 minus, but also the 2 minus. So you have to be careful of that. Now what we're going to do, factor out of each of these. Factor these separately. So you could take a 5 out and an x out. And so 15 divided by 5 is 3 x squared divided by x is x. 10 divided by 5, and x divided by x leaves no x. So this is, remember, the very first type, type of factoring you ever did. And then I'm going to take a negative 1 out of this one. And that leaves 3x, 2 divided by negative 1, negative 1. Now, we have one term, two terms, but they both... I'm sorry, this should be 3x minus 2. But they both have a 3x minus 2 in them. And so I'm going to pull a 3x minus 2 out because it's a common factor. And after I do that, that leaves a 5x and a minus 1. And that is factored. Some of you could have gone from this straight to this and just played around, well, is it 3 and 5 or is it 1 and 15? And with the 2, is it 2 and 1 or is it 1 and 2? And you're perfectly fine with playing around, and I'm perfectly fine if you bypass these steps and get to here. But some of you don't enjoy the puzzle. Some of you like to have a method to do it every single time. The key is to let these match up. And now, 3x minus 2 equals 0, and 5x minus 1 equals 0. So 3x, if you add the 2 to the other side, and then divide by 3, you get x equals 2 thirds. And if you add the 1, and x equals 1 fifth. There you have it. The AC method. So now what we're going to do is move on to this number 5. We've got a 12, a 2, and an 80. And each one, x cubed, x squared, and x, these are all multiples of 2. So I'm going to take out a 2. And I'm going to take out an x. So out of that, 12x cubed is, leaves a 6x squared plus x minus 40 equals 0. So we have 2x out in front. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the AC method. So 6 times negative 40 
equals negative 240. Now, so we have to find two things that multiply to negative 240 and add to 1. Now, some of you are really good with this and some of you aren't, so I'm going to teach a little trick. Um, so we want to figure out what, what times what is 240. Well, what if some of you just constantly do 240 divided by, say, 12? So you know 12 and 20. But what if you and your calculator just randomly put an x there? So if you did 240 divided by x and then went to your table and you started scrolling. And I'm scrolling until they are very close together because I want them to add to x. Add to 1x. And so, until you find it, 15 and 16. So 15 times 16 is 240. And if the 15 is negative, 16 minus 15 will give us 1. And so, I'm using this one, and again, how I did that was just utilizing the calculator a little bit. Obviously, if you don't have your calculator, it won't be possible to do what we just did. So now we split up our middle term again. I'm going to put the 15x first, just to avoid that whole negative fiasco over here again. But it's not necessary. So we group them, and again, 1x split up to become this, we didn't do anything magical, we're just splitting it up with a purpose. So we, out of this first bunch we can pull a 3x, and that leaves a 2x minus 5. 6 divided by 3, 15 divided by five, 3. Out of the next one, um, so I noticed right off the bat that 4 goes into 16, but you can also think, oh, 8 goes into 16 and 40. So I'm going to pull out an 8. And another trick is that you know that this is going to have to be the 2 inside in order to get them to match up like we had. So 40 divided by 8 is 5, and so sure enough, we do get the same thing. Now we have this 2x hanging out in front, and we're going to factor out 2x minus 5 and 3x plus 8. Now, this is technically not a quadratic. I just wanted to show you that sometimes you can get this dangling x out front that could also equal 0. So now you have 2 times something times something times something. So either x equals 0, or 2 equals 0 doesn't matter because it doesn't equal 0. So x equals 0, 2x minus 5 equals 0. Add the 5, divide by 2, 5 halves or 2 and a half. And 3x plus 8 equals 0, so 3x equals negative 8, so x equals negative 8 thirds. There you have it. Reminder, all of these, if you set them equal to y, you can find um, 12x cubed plus 2x squared minus 80x. Um, so it's going up, coming back down, and going up. If you hit trace, you can just double check this real quick, that when you plug in 0, you get 0. When you plug in 5 divided by 2, you get 0. When you plug in negative 8 thirds, you get 0. And obviously you could also plug this back into these, and you better get 0 because it better solve the equation. Just another way of doing it. So, these next two, very, very similar. But I would encourage you guys to try them on your own. Try it out. Pause the video. Do the AC method. So you get negative 60. 4 times negative 15. So again, what multiplies to negative 60? We've got 6 and 10, 12 and 5. And that's going to be our winner. No, wait. It's not. 20 and 3. So 20 and 3 because, and the 12 and 5 do add to 17, but notice that it's got to multiply to a negative 60. So it's got to be a negative 20 and a positive 3. So 4x squared minus 20x plus 3x minus 15.
15. So you get 4x in common here. Pull out it leaves an x minus 5. And there's a 3 in common here. That leaves an x minus 5. x minus 5 in common, pull it out, x minus 5 times 4x plus 3. Now all of these have been set equal to 0. Some problems in factoring may just be a simple factoring problem. x equals negative 3 fourths. Alright, let's try another. This one has this thing over here. Remember we want to set everything equal to zero. So I'm going to say positive 8m squared. I'm going to move everything over here. Add 8m squared and then I'm going to put it in order. 28m plus 120. Um, so I'm going to just divide by 8. If you were factoring, you could not do this. If you were factoring, you'd have to factor out the 8. But because we're, we have an equation, if you divide both sides by 8, it's just scaling it down. Um, sorry, 28 is not a factor of 8. So I'm going to divide instead by 4. And so we get 2m squared. 28 divided by 4 is 7m. 120 divided by 4 is 30. And so we have 2 times 30. Mm. 2 times 30 is 60. Uh, what multiplies to 60? And when I moved the 120 over, this should be negative. And that should be negative. So negative and negative. Um, because I was noticing that nothing would add. So we have 6 and 10. We have 3 and 20. Probably need some place in between. Um, 5 and 12. Sorry. So, 5 and 12, if the 5 is negative, so 2m squared minus 5m plus 12m minus 30. And we group them together. Take out the m, 2m minus 5. Take out a 6. And that leaves 2m. 30 divided by 6 is 5. And we have 2m minus 5. That we factor out. And that leaves an m. And it leaves a 6. One, uh, one thing is that when people have... Sorry, I'll just finish this. Add the 5, divide by 2. Um, and then m equals negative 6 as well. Um, when people have nothing that they have to take out of this one, and you just pretend the 6 wasn't there, if you take out 2m minus 5, that leaves m, but it would leave a plus 1 if there was no number there. Just remember that if you take something out of itself, anything divided by itself is 1. All right. A couple special types of factorings. These will go very, very quickly. When you multiply out a perfect square trinomial, first off, I'm going to show you what not to do. It is not equal to x squared plus 3 squared or x squared plus 9. So don't feel tempted to do that. One of my most common mistakes I see. Why is that? Well, it's because x plus 3 squared means x plus 3 times x plus 3. And so you get x squared plus 3x plus 3x plus 9 when you multiply that out. 
or x squared plus 6x plus 9. So this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. It's a perfect square because it can be written as something squared, and it's a trinomial because it has three terms, tri. So what I look for is, and this thing does the same thing, is that this 3 doubles to make the 6 because you get a 3x and a 3x. So you get two of those, and then the 3 is squared. So for this one, I would get 25x squared. I would get a 10x and a 10x, so 20x, and I'd get a 4. So what I look for is 25 is the 5, and the 4 is the 2, and I just double check that half of this is 2 times 5. So I'm going to practice this, 2x and 7, 2x and 7. Because it's got a minus here, these two have to be a minus. So we get 2x minus 7 squared. I just want to double check it though, because 4x squared is 2x, and 49 was 7. We're taking square roots, mind you. And then we get negative 14 minus 14, so you get a minus 28x. So we're good. Try another. Square root of 81 is 9t. Square root of 100 is a 10. 9t and 10. It's got to add to a negative, and so these both have to be minuses. That is 9t minus 10 squared. Again, double check. Minus 90, minus 90, and you get minus 180. So you're good. Um, again, it's the one very similar to what we just did. 2a and 2a, because the 4a squared and 25 is 5 and 5. Because they have to add to a positive 20, these are going to be a plus. 2a plus 5 squared. Now, another special type. When you multiply x minus 4, x plus 4, what these are called are conjugates. When the middle term is opposite. Sorry, when the, the sign in between is opposite. They have a special property. Because something special happens when you add multiply conjugates together. So you get x squared plus 4x minus 4x minus 16. That cancels out every single time. Just like this one. 9x minus 6x plus 6x. Quabam, quabam minus 4. It happens every single time. I'm sorry, I need a squared there. So this is x squared minus 16, really, and this is 9x squared minus 4. So how do you know when to change this back into this? Well, you look for something squared minus something squared, or something squared minus something squared. And P.S. on these, even if you multiply 4 times 49, you will still end up with this if you use the AC method. So there's no harm done if you don't notice that it's a perfect square. So, notice that 64, square root of 64 is 8, square root of 121 is 11. So you know that this has to be 8x minus 11, 8x plus 11. And you're done. Difference of squares, meaning subtracting of squares. And this one, we can take out a 2 first. And sorry, this equals 0. And so 8x minus 11 equals 0. So 8x equals 11. So x equals 11 over 8. Um, you also get x equals negative 11 over 8. Now, this also works if you just add 121 over, divide by 64, and take the square root of both sides. I didn't solve any of these up here, I apologize. x would equal 7 halves. xt would equal add the 10, divide by the 9, so that would be 10 ninths, because it's equal to 0. 
equal to zero, and a would equal negative five halves. Now it equals it twice because it's a squared, but we call that a double root. Uh, so if you take out the two, you get four x squared minus nine equals zero. Or you could divide by the two, that would work as well. And you get two x plus three, two x minus three. Recognize it first is, okay, you only have two terms. Or in case you want to, there's a zero x in the middle. But I don't ever think of it like that. But so it's got to multiply to nine, negative nine, and add to zero. So three and negative three add to zero. So two x plus three equals zero. So you get x equals negative three over two and x equals positive 3 over 2. Some people write this as plus or minus 3 halves, and that would work as well. And that is factoring quadrilaterals. Good luck with it.